Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 314. The Word of God, the Bible says of itself, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. The Word of God pierces. If you've been watching this video series for any number of time, you will have heard me made mention of that reference over and over and over again. Maybe by now, you've got it committed to heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12. The Word of God is quick and powerful. Yes, indeed. Yes, it is. That's why we are doing Bible in a year. If this is your first time, joining us for Bible in a Year. First of all, I want to welcome you to Digital Disciple Ministries. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to this video series, Bible in a Year. This is a video series that follows a reading plan you can find on the YouVersion Bible app. It's called Bible in a Year 2020. And what we're doing is we are reading through the entire Bible for the year 2020. That's right from cover to cover by the end of this year. Now, obviously, the year is almost done and we'll all, we're, we're almost finished reading through the entire scriptures, but don't go anywhere. Join us for today. It's going to be powerful. But what you can do is because there is a new year that's getting ready to come upon us, get your mind ready and arm yourselves to do it again next year or to start it brand new next year get through the bible and what this is going to do it's going to build your discipline it's going to build your ability to get into the word of god and that's a habit well worth developing we all need it especially in these times in these days the bible says of the end times that we need to be careful because people are going to be deceived but with the word of God, we can ensure that we are not deceived by knowing the truth. So make a commitment, get into the word of God, every single video up until this point, and I intend to finish them all, is available to you on the, uh, the channel. I was gonna say the Disney channel, <laughs> what am I thinking about? No, this channel digital disciple ministries and you can use that to follow along with your reading and we just meditating we're just meditating on the word of god we're just speculating we're learning how to put the word of god into our hearts through uh studying through exhortation through edification just whatever we can we're having a good time having some discussions here leave a comment in the uh, comment section below let us know what you think so let's get into the Word of God. I've got several scriptures uh, highlighted here from today's reading, and I'd like to get into it. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter 122, and I want to start with verse number one. So as is custom for me to do, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, but you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are most comfortable with. I use the King James because I like to do deep studies. And uh, one of the benefits of using the King James is a strong, exhaustive concordance of the Greek and the Hebrew languages that are used uh, from what the Bible was translated from. And there's another program or app that I use called the Blue Letter Bible that I dig into all of that. Oftentimes you may have heard uh, me make mention of that reference. So, Psalms 122, verse number one. A song of degrees of David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You may have heard this psalm. You may have heard this in the song. You may have heard this mentioned in passing or maybe someone mentioned it in a message. Maybe somebody preached on it. If you haven't, wonderful, we're going to talk about it. But there's a story behind that saying. Yes, David wrote this. Why would he say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you 
if we're being honest, are glad when someone says, hey, let's go to church. Or perhaps you've gotten comfortable with the idea of going to church. Maybe you find yourself in a place where you're a little spiritually dry. Maybe church isn't as exciting as it used to be when you first got saved. It happens to people more frequently than we think. We get used to the idea of going to church. We get used to the, the song service. We get used to the choir. We get used to the singing. We get used to the songs. Usually they're the same familiar songs. We get used to the preaching. We get used to the preachers or the teachers. It just becomes routine. It can become uh, just an everyday thing that we do almost mechanically if we're not paying attention. Are you glad when someone says, hey, let's go to church? Or have you come to a place to where, you know what, this feels like a chore to me. I'll admit, there's been times that I thought, man, you know what, <sighs> okay, I gotta be a little intentional about going to church. I don't really feel like it. And there's times that I just, you know, I'd just rather stay home, but I made the decision to assemble. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why was David glad? Well, there is a story amongst Hebrews. There is literature that scholars have discovered that would suggest that David was thought to have been an illegitimate child. David's father, Jesse, questioned whether David was really his. And uh, you can find this upon doing some research about David. But there was a question of uh, David being legitimate. Uh, as I remember it, there was a dispute or something between David's mother and David's father. And she departed for a season and uh, came back. And lo and behold, there was David. So David was probably treated like a stepchild. Now... Scripture seems to support that idea. Remember when Samuel came to Jesse and said, hey, present your sons. I'm going to anoint one of them kings. And Jesse presented his sons, all of them, except for David. David was out in the fields. He didn't bother getting him. Why? Because he probably didn't think that David was his so, all of the sons were presented. God chose none of them. Samuel said, hey, do you have another son? And he remembered David in the field. This must have been a powerful moment for his father. Uh, for his father to realize, hey, you know what? This bears witness that David is my son. Now, the thing was, illegitimate children were not allowed to go to the temple. They were not allowed to go to the house of the Lord. And perhaps David was not allowed to go. David didn't get to go to the temple. Traditionally, the Jews went to the temple, but David couldn't go because his father questioned the legitimacy of his sonship. So having that understanding, one can get why David might say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And the saying goes that he wasn't able to go to the temple. He wasn't allowed to come and worship. And this law can also be found in Leviticus. I don't know what the reference is. If you do, would you mind posting that in the comment section? But now we can understand why the psalmist would say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because before he wasn't allowed to. And now that he's been legitimized, validated as a son of Jesse, he can go. Isn't God wonderful? What if we had the same attitude? This is a privilege. David saw this as a privilege. He didn't grow up in it. So he knew what it was like not to be able to go. 
So when the opportunity comes to go, it's not something that he has to do. It's not something that had to be done. For David, going to the house of the Lord was something that he now got to do. He was privileged to go into the house of the Lord. You see, it's all a matter of perspective. You and I are privileged to worship. This ought to be more real now than ever. Seeing all of these COVID restrictions and all of this COVID stuff going on. It's a privilege. We should have the same mindset. Some of you, I understand, might not be able to assemble together. But what should that mean for the rest of us? The reality is there are churches that are closed right now. My church is open. Therefore, I am glad when it's time to go to church. It's a privilege and an honor. Sometimes you don't know the value of what you have until you experience the loss of it. Sometimes what comes off as duty at one moment in time is quickly changed to become a privilege. It's all a matter of perception. How do you perceive this situation? <laughs> How do you perceive your situation? Started speaking in tongues here almost. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a matter of perception. Those of you whose church is open right now, count it a privilege. And rejoice when it comes time to go to church. And those of you who are not yet able to go, perhaps you will have a new, refreshed perspective on going to church. And a new appreciation will follow when the doors open up again. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20. And I'd like to look at verse number five. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. What I want to highlight in this verse is that the Bible says that God made himself known unto them. He revealed himself. He didn't hide himself. He didn't keep himself a secret. He wanted to be known, which is my argument now. God wants to be known. God wants to reveal himself. God is not so much a mystery as people make him out to be. Sure, just because you don't understand some of the things that he does and his thoughts are higher than ours doesn't mean that God is hiding himself. We can't know everything that God is doing in our lives. It's not good for us. Besides, most of us probably wouldn't believe God. If he told us what he was really up to or if he told us how he was going to do it, we might have a little struggle believing or even wanting God. No, Lord, you want to do it? How? Like what? Mm, I'm good. I ain't trying to go through all of that to get that. I think God protects us by keeping some of these things from us. But again, just because God, just because God doesn't allow, or, or I should say, just because we don't understand some of the things that God does or how he does it, doesn't mean that God does not want to be known as a person. You can know me as a person and not know that I'm up to something. Like if you're trying to surprise a loved one, they know you, but you're trying to hide that you're doing this thing for the time that it needs to be revealed. That doesn't mean that you don't want them to know you. No, God wants to be known by his people. Listen, the scripture bears witness again in verse number nine of the same chapter. 
but I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Again, God says, I've made myself known. And I'm developing an argument here. Not just in this video, but this is a personal study, a personal endeavor of mine. The revelation of God. The fact that God wants to be known. God doesn't want to be a secret. God doesn't want to be a mystery. He wants to be known. He wants us to know him. It's not a secret. It's been God's plan all along. You can't have relationship with somebody that you don't know. Or the depth of that relationship is very shallow. In order for there to be intimacy, you have to know somebody. And God wants to have an intimate relationship with you, which means that God wants you to know who he is. It's not a mystery. He's not hiding. It's not a secret. God's not trying to keep who he is from you. No, he wants to reveal himself. A lot of the things that we go through is because God desires to reveal himself. So let the Almighty reveal himself to you. We need to get it into our minds. We need to let the concept enter into our hearts that God wants to be known and that God will reveal himself. Look at Jesus. Jesus is the express image of God's person. <laughs> this is what Jesus said to Philip, by the way, who was questioning Jesus. He said, Lord, we don't know the way. And he said, man, have I been so long time with you, Philip, and yet Hast thou not known me? Philip was talking about, show us the Father and it'll suffice us. All the while, Jesus is saying, hey, listen, when you're interacting with me, you get the Father. This is the Father. This is an express image of the Father. I want to I want to take you there. It's found in John, somewhere in the middle of the book. Let's find that verse real quick. Hast thou not known me? John chapter 14, let's go to verse 8. No, let's go to verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. How? You've seen the father in the son. The son is the body of the father. What a, it's not a mystery. <laughs> it's reality. Verse eight, Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the father and it sufficeth us. What? You're not paying attention, Philip. Listen, Jesus says in verse number nine, Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? What? It's a question mark there in the text. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Go back to verse number seven. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. It is the absolute will of God that he is known. This is why he sent Jesus. To reveal himself. Praise God. It's not a mystery. It's not a secret. God wants to be known. He wants to be known by you. So if you are in a relationship with God, glory be to his name. You've been privileged to know the creator of heaven and earth. Let's not take that for granted. Brothers and sisters, may the God of heaven bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There, there will be a link with my face 
that'll take you to the subscription page. Share this with your friends and with your family. Leave a comment, share your uh, reflection, your meditation, contribute to the community. We are having a good time growing in the Lord. May the grace of God be with you all. In Jesus' name. Lord have mercy. Please have mercy on me. And if I done done somebody wrong.